Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Alex and joining me today is my 10 year old puppy Sammy who really wanted to show off her new bed with you guys. And if you're a dog lover like me, I think the simple to make project is perfect for you. So stick around and I'll show you how I did it. Since the majority of this project will be made from walnut and white oak, the first thing I do before working on any solid lumber is to make sure that the wood is properly acclimated to the shop to minimize any wood movement concerns later on. And my favorite tool for doing this is the Orion 950 that Wagner Meter sent me, which I'll use to first measure the equilibrium moisture content level in my shop, and then the moisture content of the wood. And usually I find that if the numbers are within 1%, then I'm good to go. Now while I'm milling and breaking down the lumber for the bed frame, let me show you how everything will come together. The top is simply just a four piece frame made with walnut for three of the sides and then white oak for the front panel which are joined with miter joints. And to minimize material usage, I will use two pieces of three quarter inch thick cleats for the bottom instead of a full panel. And these will become the supports that the bed slats will rest on as well as what the splayed legs will attach to. But more on that later. So after I ripped all of the work pieces down to their final width, I proceeded with marking and cutting the mitered ends at the table saw to bring everything down to their final lengths. And while the blade was still set at 45 degrees, I added a small chamfer along what will be the bottom outer edge of the bed frames. I did this because I thought it would look kinda cool, but because the bed sits so low, I couldn't even see it unless I'm actually looking for it. But it's there, so I figured I'd show it to you. The only real bit of joinery that needs to be cut into the frame pieces was the rabbits for accepting the two cleats. So after marking out the size of the joint using a piece of 3 quarter inch ply that I had laying around, I made the cuts at the router table. And the reason I used the router instead of my table saw was because the rabbits along the two side panels will actually be stopped at about 5 inches instead of running the full length like the ones on the front and back pieces. And here's a drawing of what I'm talking about if that doesn't make any sense. Obviously, that left rounded corners, which I used a chisel to square up. After which, I moved on to cutting the big opening on the front panel. I basically just laid out whatever I thought looked good and then made the cut. But since I didn't have a bandsaw, I chose to make two separate cuts at the table saw first, just to keep the majority of the cuts nice and straight, and then connected them using a jigsaw to finalize that shape. The right panel will receive a taper cut to provide that transition from where it mates to that opening in the front panel. And once again, I just laid out what I thought looked good without removing too much material and then made the cut with my track saw. One thing I forgot to film here is that because we're making an angled cut toward the mitered edge, the track saw had to be tipped a little bit when making that cut. I talked about this briefly in my entryway bench video, so I'll leave a link up here for you if you want to take a look. Now that all the frame pieces have their final shapes, I used the 45 degree chamfer bit at the router table to add a bevel along what will be the top and side edge of all the sides. This is both for aesthetic reasons as well as so that Sammy's head won't be pressed up against a hard edge if she ever decides to rest her head on top of the wooden panels. Alright, now it's time for what I think is the best part of the build. Someone out there might have a better way to do this, but I didn't find it, so this was how I did it. I first took a measurement of the diameter of the ball using my calipers, then with a quarter inch bit and guide bushing installed in my router, I took another measurement between the bit and the outer diameter of that bushing. And whatever that second measurement is, multiply by two, then add it to the diameter of the ball is the diameter of the circle I'll need to cut for the template, which I will use to guide the router 
cutter for cutting the groove that the tennis ball will sit in. So after I removed the bulk of the material using a forstner bit, I used my jigsaw to cut small chunks away, bit by bit, making sure to stay inside the lines. And one of the main reasons I like using quarter inch MDF for templates is because how easy it is to carve material away using the jigsaw. Then all I have to do is use a piece of sandpaper to smooth out any jagged edges left behind. To cut the tennis ball in half, I used the opening of the can as a guide to help me draw a line around the equator of the ball. And then I just took a knife to cut around that line. What's important here is to stay as close as possible to that equator, because that's basically where we took measurements for making the template. Next, I placed the hemispheres where I thought they would look good and then clamped the templates down on the workpiece. Then I just used my router to cut the circular grooves that the two halves of the tennis ball would sit in. So one small issue I anticipated was the small gap between the outer edge of the groove and the tennis ball, which of course was caused by the curvature of the ball. I figured I could either make this a design feature by putting a chamfer around the edge of the groove, or I could try to hide it. And since my hand cut tennis balls don't have nice straight edges, I chose to go with the latter. And since I was going to use epoxy to attach the ball in the grooves anyway, I decided to add some yellow pigment to it so that the epoxy will fill in any of the gaps. And I think in the end, the yellow epoxy created a pretty seamless transition between the ball and the wood, so that a person wouldn't really notice it unless they got on their knees and really looked closely at it. While waiting for that 15 minute epoxy to cure, I cut in some dominoes to prepare for the assembly. And if you don't have a domino, you can use the tape method or band clamps, both would be really effective. I don't think it's really necessary to add additional reinforcements to the bed frame since it's not really structural. And as you can see, the dominoes were there to pretty much just help me hold the panels in place while I clamped them up. The next day after the glue has cured, I took measurements between the rabbits on the bottom of the bed frame to determine the length and width of the cleats, which I cut from 3 quarter inch plywood. And at this point, I don't want to attach the cleats to the bed frames just yet because, as I explained earlier, these cleats are what the legs will attach to. And the way I'm going to do that is by cutting stop dados on both ends of each cleat, which the legs will sit into. And by doing it this way, I will be able to keep that clean minimalistic look without adding additional stretch on the bottom. So after milling the wood down to about an inch thick, I proceeded with cutting the splayed legs as I always do, but this time I decided to go with a much steeper angle of 30 degrees. And since these legs will be sitting in dados, I had to factor in a little extra length when cross-cutting them, as well as when I'm laying out the taper. I think my taper went from 3 and a quarter inches down to 1 inch. This coincidentally yielded two legs from each block of wood with barely any waste, which is always a great feeling. After centering the legs on the cleats, I laid out the stop dados and made the cuts over at the router table with a half inch bit. And using a router table along with a stop block made really quick work of this. I just had to line up the bit to one of my layout lines, make the cut on one end, flip the board over and cut the other end. Then readjust the fence to line up with my other layout line and repeat this process. After squaring up the rounded ends with a chisel, I sanded the cleats and the legs up to 220 grit and then attached them together using glue and clamps. 
though Sammy isn't overweight or anything, I still decided to add some dowels between the legs and the cleats to reinforce that joint. It was really quick to do and provided me with a peace of mind, especially with how much the legs are angled outwards. I used two 3 8 inch dowels at each joint, which I think was plenty for this application. At this point, I was all but ready to start applying finish when I noticed the front panel was just really flat and really boring. So I decided to cut three half inch wide grooves in the front. But since my feet weren't very good clamps to keep the frame from wobbling, the router ended up drifting a few times. So I had to make the grooves wider to cover up that mistake. That's how I ended up with two three quarter inch grooves instead. And if I had the opportunity to do all of this over again, I'd either use my CNC to carve Sammy's name in the front or cut the grooves before everything is assembled. But I think this still came out better than if I had left it blank. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. With the finish applied to both the frame and legs, I attached them with some screws countersunk into the cleats. Glue's really not necessary for this, but I'd already applied finish at this point, so it's not like I had much of a choice. But anyway, the last thing I did was cut some strips of half inch ply for the bed slats, attach them to the top of the cleats using screws, and that was that. Okay, so besides wishing I'd done the front panel a little more cleanly, I'm actually really pumped with how this came out. And I hope you guys aren't intimidated by any of these steps so that you can give it a shot as well because I know your fur babies will love it as much as Sammy loves hers. Alright guys, this is Alex from Bevelish Creations and I'll catch you guys next time.